let's look at the units of 40k who just don't have the decency to die. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're doing a video that I've received quite a few requests for in the past, and we're going to look at some of the most resilient units in 40k, the ones that can take the sheer amount of most punishment before they go down. I feel that in 8th edition 40k was a bit more slanted towards having the absolute maximum amount of damage output, and now it perhaps rewards just sheer unkillable durability more than it ever did. Parking the Toffee's units on the game on objectives, and surviving in table quarters and doing actions, is one of the main ways that you can win. So it does stand to reason that these units that I'll be talking about are some of the most competitive in the entire game, and they frequently appear in the top lists. Just for this comparison, we're going to be ignoring fortifications, often they tend to be quite durable, but also do far less than any of the units here. It's just not quite as valuable to have something that's incredibly tough, if it's just going to be sitting there and not contributing to your battle plans. I thought we'd look at a couple of horde units first, then a bunch of mid-toughness elite infantry, and finish up by looking at some monsters, characters and vehicles. First up we have Necron Warriors, one of the most annoying units to shift in the Necron decks, 13 points per model, and toughness 4 with a 4 plus armour save. Commonly fielded in blobs of 20, they get a 5 plus reanimation protocol save, provided the unit isn't actually wiped out, and per 100 points they'll take around 39 heavy bolter shots, or 52 bolter shots to bring down 100 points of the models. I'll be trying to compare each unit like this a bit, just so we can weigh them up. I'm not sure just from their raw stats that Necron Warriors are the toughest things around, to be honest, but I think it's more that they have their so durable reputation because they have some excellent buffs going. A Chronomancer can give them a 5 plus invul save, and you can take a piece of Cryptic Arcana that can put them in light cover permanently as well. And then you can get some further healing from Technomancers, Ghost Arcs, or even Resurrection Orbs to stand up a bunch of more models. On top of that, equipped with Gauss Reapers, they can be fairly decent in offensive threats as well, and are obsec too, so having a decent amount of warriors in the battle line can certainly be very intimidating. The other big horde type unit that I wanted to focus on were Pox Walkers. They're only 5 points per model, and a toughness 4 with a 6 plus feel no pain, which really isn't bad at all for what you pay. On top of that, they're also fearless, so no combat attrition casualties, and they also have obsec as well. I think that Pox Walkers are certainly worth noting, because point for point they're not even all that easy to kill, even if you fire dedicated anti-horde weapons at them. To kill 20 pox walkers for 100 points, you have to fire 72 bolt rifles at them, or 46 heavy bolter shots. On top of this, to make them even tougher, they can regenerate models with a stratagem, or when they kill models in melee. And with a few command points, you can even respawn an entire damaged unit in the Harbinger's formation from that new Charidon book. What really takes these guys to the next level though, is that virulent strain stratagem that allows them to really amp up their damage output. For example, a unit of 20 pox walkers in the Harbinger's detachment can use virulent strain and the Harbinger's stratagem for re-rolling hit rolls for pox walkers and dump out around about 10 mortal wounds all in one go. That's crazy damage output for a really tough unit that has obsec. Moving into slightly more elite models now, and we have the Death Riders of Krieg. I did make an entire video about them, just how tough they are, so feel free to check that out if you'd like to, but these guys are 15 points a model, toughness 4, 3 wounds with a 4 plus save, and their Krieg steeds give them a 5 plus feel no pain type save, making them an absolute nightmare to shift. With that combination of a high number of wounds, low cost and a feel no pain type save, they're always going to be hard to deal with. On average they take around 24 las cannons, 56 heavy bolter shots, or 135 bolt rifle shots to down 100 points of them. There's almost nothing that's efficient at shooting them. I did write that there's not much durability buffs, but I told a bit of a lie. They can get Psychic Barrier and Night Shroud from an Astropath, though obviously they might struggle to keep up a bit. In any case though, minus one to hit and plus one save really wouldn't hurt on a big unit. As for damage, they're not particularly hard hitting anymore, unfortunately, but we'll still do at least a little bit of damage to enemy units on the charge with those Hunting Lancers. Though perhaps the most important thing is that they're incredibly fast with orders, and they can also outflank behind your opponent. With the combination of move, 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 these guys are just excellent move blockers. Next we head over to one of the strongest units in the game right now, in the Deathwing Terminators, and the ones that I would pick for durability purposes are the 43 point models with Thunderhammers and Storm Shields. Toughness 4 and 3 wounds, a 2 plus save that goes down to a 1 plus save with their Storm Shield, a 4 plus invul, and it gets even nastier if you can get them light cover in some way. I'm sure almost everyone's aware of these guys now, but their inner circle rule grants them another excellent massive free buff, it basically means they're never wounded on anything better than a 4+, plus when enemy models target them. Basically small arms just run into a massively high save, 
and Heavy Fire is tanked between a 4 plus inval save and not being able to wound them on any better than 4s in the first place. For just 100 points of the base models, you've got 19 LAS cannons, 84 heavy bolter shots, or 126 bolt rifle shots to wipe the unit. They do have access to some of the best toughness buffs out of any of this list though, the Pennant of Remembrance on a Bladeguard Ancient or something for minus 1 damage, the Space Marine Apothecary for a feel no pain save, healing injured models and resurrecting dead ones, and the Dark Angel's Lion Unbreakable stratagem, that's the one that only lets you fight them in melee, if you're actually in close combat and engagement range, it can really neuter the damage output of any sort of horde unit. On top of this, they're absolute monsters in close combat with those thunder hammers, and can get easy buffs for that as well, and they also have obsec too, cause why not? There's a bit of a trend in the mid-tier units, often they tend to be units with storm shields and close combat weapons, and the guard Borgrins are absolutely no exception. Borgrins tend to be paired with an astropath with psychic barrier, so here we're assuming a 9 Borgrin squad of 35 points per model, and then an extra astropath on top of that for another 35 points. The ones I have here are given slab shields for the 2 plus armor save, but you could mix in a few brute shields to better tank some extra high AP shots. In any case, Borgrins are toughness 5, 3 wounds with a 2 plus save, and they have the very easy buff to access of 1 command point per turn for using the take cover stratagem to give them plus 1 to their saving throws versus enemy fire. Combine that with casting Psychic Barrier for a 83% chance for another plus 1 to their save, and you then have a unit that has a 2 plus armor save with an extra plus 2 to that save on top of that. Missile launches will still be saved on 2 pluses, last cannons will still be saved on 3s. If you do make use of both of these buffs, they have some of the best numbers on the entire list. 21 LAS cannons, 94 heavy bolter shots, or 210 bolt rifle shots, to down just under 3 Borgrins for 100 points. I would bear in mind though that these are a little bit worse in melee, as take cover won't apply then, or if you're going second and you haven't had a chance to cast the psychic power. Again though, if you manage to get one of them in light cover as well, then that would be effective plus 3 to that already 2 plus armor save, so you'd be saving on LAS cannons on 2s, and like the Death Riders, you could also use a Night Shroud Astropath for minus 1 to hit at range as well. Their damage output isn't all consuming, but it, you do get quite a lot of strength 7, AP minus 1 and damage 2 attacks, which will generally chip away at just about anything in the game. You can also use a priest for a bit more where that came from. Moving on to the other flavour of terminators that are stomping the meta at the moment, these guys are the Blight Lord terminators, 40 points per model, 4 3 toughness 5 wounds with a 2 plus armour save, and a big 4 plus invul. Deathguard's disgustingly resilient gets them minus 1 damage at base as well, meaning that they're particularly tough against any damage 2 weapons, and per 100 points worth of models, they tank 17 LAS cannons, 67 heavy bolter shots, or 101 bolt rifles. Just on their base stats, they're not quite as tanky as the Deathwing Terminators, I'm afraid, though it is quite a close run thing. You can use Miasma of Pestilence on them to get a minus 1 to hit, and also get Feel No Pain from a Plague Surgeon, and again, like quite a few of the options on this list, they have fairly decent damage output, though it's not spectacular because of how much value they have in their durability. Those Plague Swords and Flails will do very well against infantry, they won't do all that great against really hard targets. Sticking with the God of Plague for a while, we have the Beasts of Nurgle, for 35 points per model. These guys don't really bother with particularly high saves or anything, and just bring mass tough wounds to the table. They're toughness 5 and have a mighty 5 wounds each, really not bad for that profile, a 5 plus invul, and a 5 plus feel no pain. Much like the Death Riders with their mass wounds and feel no pain type save, they're pretty much solid against anything that you want to shoot at them, and they're particularly good at laughing off really high damage weapons with high AP such as last cannons. They're a little bit more susceptible to mid-strength weapons like heavy bolters, where they'd have 54 shots to bring them down, or 144 bolt rifles. Again, they can also get Miasma of Pestilence for minus 1 to hit, and you can heal them a bit with Fleshy Abundance, though it might not be the most high value cast. Compared with some of the other options on the list, with random attacks and no AP, the damage is a bit mediocre in combat. In a big unit though, you could think about using their Acidic Slobber stratagem to chew through some slightly harder targets with a few mortal wounds. Next up, switching back to the Codex Astartes, we have Iron Hands Blade Guard Veterans. To be honest, Blade Guard Veterans of any stripe are pretty effective and very tough, but if we get the choice of chapter, then why not make it Iron Hands, as they get a 6 up feel no pain as well. The Blade Guard are 35 points per model, toughness 4 with 3 wounds and a 2 plus armor save, and a 5 plus inball from the Storm Shield. If they're Iron Hands, then we get a 6 plus feel no pain type save, and if we have a big unit of them advancing into the middle, we can always use Transhuman Physiology for 1 command point to make them only be able to be wounded on 4 plus. Alternatively, if we had them as Deathwing, then they'd get this at base instead of the 6 plus feel no pain. 
Blade Guard veterans are some of the best elite units for tanking really high damage weapons. Things like las cannons just really aren't all that effective against them. They'd need around 27 to take down 100 points worth of the models. And are maybe a little bit more vulnerable to mid-range firepower such as heavy bolters or even decent AP small arms fire like bolt rifles. As with any space marines, you could think about an apothecary for healing or resurrecting models. And if they do catch up with things in close combat, they have some very brutal well-rounded melee damage with those strength 5 damage 2 power swords that are likely to put a bit of a dent in virtually anything. It's not really too surprising to see why Bladeguard veterans are one of the strongest units in Codex Space Marines right now. Finally, in our last entry in heavily armoured melee folks with storm shields and combat weapons, we have the Custodian Guard. These guys are 52 points per model, for 3 toughness 5 wounds. Again, like Deathwing, they have an effective 1 plus armour save, but unlike Deathwing, they have a 3 plus invul save as well. The Storm Shield gives them a 4 plus invul save, and then the Custodian Special Rule improves that to a 3 plus, which is one of the last invul saves in 40k that's quite this strong. Again, if they are just holding an objective in light cover, then that's essentially a 0 plus armour save. Obviously ones always fail, but again like Borgrin, if you're shooting them with AP-2 weapons, then that's still going to be saved on a 2 plus. They'll take 18 last cannons, 70 heavy bolter shots, or 160 bolt rifles to kill 100 points of them, and that can very easily be far worse, as they can get an easy minus 1 to hit from a nearby Custodes Vexilla. They have a transhuman physiology type stratagem, so you can only wound them on a 4 plus, if that's going to be relevant. And quite a lot of people like to run the Custodes as Shadow Keepers, where you can have a reactive minus 1 to strength buff. So say if you were just about to be shot by a whole bunch of strength 5 weapons, you could just suddenly magic them into being strength 4. Again, these guys are just an all-round strong unit, they still have fairly respectable melee damage output, maybe not quite as strong as Blade Guards, but still a decent amount of strength 5 high AP multi-damage attacks. Now let's look at some of the toughest vehicles, monsters and characters then. First off, I thought we'd start with the Telemon Dreadnought, which I believe is the toughest point-for-point -point Dreadnought in all of 40k. This guy's 260 points in his cheapest loadout, he's toughness 8, 14 wounds with a 2 plus armor save, and on top of that he gets a 4 plus invul, a 6 plus feel no pain, and minus 1 to his damage for being a Dreadnought with Duty Eternal. Leviathan Dreadnoughts these days are looking at this guy with Envy. He's pretty solid against anti-tank firepower, 10 last cannons needed to down 100 points worth of Telemon, 87 heavy bolters, or 174 bolt rifles. Anti-tank weapons are somewhat effective, but anything like small arms he's just going to laugh off. Per point, his damage output isn't spectacular to be honest. He's got a small amount of general purpose firepower at range, though he can be a fairly decent threat to heavies in combat with that Telemon Sestus. Moving back to Chaos Demons now, for the toughest greater demon around, and perhaps counterintuitively, it isn't a great unclean one, this exalted Lord of Change combo appears to have that guy beat. This one's 270 points, for a Lord of Change who takes the impossible robe relic, the incorporeal form warlord trait, and aura of mutability, exalted Lord of Change upgrade. At base, he's toughness 7 and 18 wounds, and the impossible robe grants him a 4 plus invul, which is increased to a 3 plus, because of the Zinch Demon's ability to add plus 1 to their invul saves. Technically the combo does work, as you add the plus 1 to the dice roll modifier, rather than the actual save itself, so he does get one of the game's rare 3 plus invul saves. On top of that, the Impossible Robe also gives him a nice extra random single reroll, which you could use when he's very close to dying to try and pass one more save. The downside is that if you do fail the save, then he does automatically die if you roll a 1. In addition to that, he gets minus 1 damage due to incorporeal form, and the Aura of Mutability gives him a 6 plus feel no pain type save, that if you pass any wounds with it, he regenerates another wound if he's not killed after. Between all of these bits, it means he's an absolute anchor for a demon list, and for every 100 points worth of magic chicken, you'll have to commit 23 last cannons, 130 heavy bolter shots, or 130 bolt rifle shots to try and take him down. Again, his damage output isn't enormously stellar for 270 points, but he can do some significant amount of mortal wounds with Infernal Gateway, and his melee is certainly decent enough to rough up a unit each turn, even if he's not going to be wading through entire armies all by himself. Probably the best thing to do with this guy is just to try and ignore him and kill the rest of the army. Next we move back to the Death Guard with the Mighty Plague Burst Crawler, perhaps one of the best archetypes for the definition of durable model in 9th edition. There are 165 points, although most people do upgrade to the Entropy Cannons for 175. Their Toughness 8, 12 wounds with a 3 plus armor save, a 5 plus invul for being a demon engine, and minus 1 damage for disgustingly resilient. Certainly a spectacularly hard tank to shift for the points. In terms of raw durability, he isn't quite as tough as the Telemon Dreadnought if we're comparing vehicles. 
but considering his damage output, he really isn't far off. Theoretically, if you wanted to maximise the toughness, you could use Miasma of Pestilence or the Iron Clot Furnace for a 4 plus invul save, though I'm not sure either are particularly efficient on the Plague Burst Crawler in real games. Generally though, for all this resilience, he does put out a decent amount of firepower, two very high damage shots with those Entropy Cannons, and a nice bit of Ignore's line of sight damage with the Plague Burst Mortar. We'd be remiss talking about the Death Guard without talking about their Primarch Mortarian, 490 points, for toughness 8 and 18 wounds, and a 3 plus armor save. I think pretty much everyone is aware just how many layers of defense this guy has, a 4 plus invul, minus 1 damage from disgustingly resilient, a 5 plus feel no pain, prevents units nearby from getting rerolls via auras, and if that weren't enough, the ability to cast Miasma of Pestilence for a very good chance indeed of being minus 1 to hit. Accounting for the chance that he might fail Miasma, he's typically going to take around 11 las cannons per 100 points, 63 heavy bolters, or 126 bolt rifles. Just a little bit tougher compared with Plague Burst Crawlers or Telemon Dreadnoughts on the anti-tank front. Not too bad at all on a model that'll kill virtually any unit that he wants to in close combat in a single round, and also provides a massive contagions of Nurgle Bubble, making everyone minus one toughness, and your choice of either half movement or denying any rerolls via the gloaming bloat. Lastly, on the characters, vehicles, and monsters front, I just thought it would be worth talking about the Salamander's Smash Captain. Technically, the cheapest that you could run him for would be 110 points, that's for a bike captain with a storm shield and chainsaw, though I think it would typically make sense to buy something like a Thunder Hammer on top of that, so he actually has some fairly decent damage output. In any case, one of the combos of Warlord traits that works quite well is plus 2 toughness, Iron Resolve, which he can stack with an extra stratagem for an extra plus 1 wound and a 6 plus fail no pain, and then perhaps most importantly of all, the Salamander's Mantle, which makes him minus 1 to wounds. Putting that all together, you've got a mighty toughness 7 character, with 7 wounds and a 2 plus armor save, a 4 plus invul, a massive minus 1 to wound, and a 6 plus feel no pain. For the points, this guy is absolutely monstrously durable. Against last cannons point for point, he's even more so than Mortarian, needing something like 13 or 14 last cannon shots to bring down 100 points, and he absolutely laughs off anything that's less than strength 7, as it'll only wound him on 6s. To be honest, I think he'd usually want to operate fairly independently, but I guess in theory you could make use of the Apothecary for healing, Fire Shield or Drake Skin as psychic powers, or Might of Heroes to make him a bit tougher and stronger. The numbers would go down a little bit if you do choose to equip him with a Thunder Hammer, but even so, for the points, this guy's just monstrously tough, per points more so than most Space Marine battle tanks. Finally, I would just bear in mind a few honourable mentions, things that you can't directly attack, or things that prevent you taking damage in the normal way. If you don't want something to die, then character protection against being shot is one of the best ways of doing so. It makes units that are also characters that are less than 10 wounds also have a really great extra layer of durability. Things like Bjorn the Fell Handed in a Dreadnought, Ravenwing Talon Masters, and that sort of thing. In particular, one great example is the Iron Hand Relic Contempt to Dreadnought, that can pack 4 LAS cannons and 2 missile launchers, and if it takes March of the Ancients to become a character, then you can't shoot this thing directly. It can just sit in the middle of the battle line, blinking out decent anti-tank shots all game long. There are plenty of other options within 40k though, say for example Alpha Legion Obliterators. If you use them or another decent firepower unit, and use Conceal on them for two command points, then they can stand in the middle of the board shooting all of your forces, potentially with a bunch of layered buffs, and your opponent can't shoot them back until they've shot down every other unit that's closer to them. Things like Riptides with Shield Drones are another potential example, though of course nowhere near as efficient as they were last edition. So rounding up, just out of all of these, I'd say that these are some of my absolute favourite picks. For Horde units, Poxwalkers are just amazing, and given their stats, I'm not too surprised that Games Workshop decided to limit their numbers somewhat within the Death Guard Codex. That Exalted Lord of Change is an absolute pillar of invulnerability that's probably best worth ignoring. Death Riders of Krieg are amazingly cheap for how much pain and a nuisance they're going to cause, and Deathwing Terminators or Custodian Guard are just going to hold down an indomitable battle line that's just going to laugh off most incoming damage before catching and killing you in melee. So let me know what you think of some of the toughest units in Warhammer 40k. If there are any units that I should have mentioned that haven't appeared on this list, also let me know. There are plenty of other units that I did want to talk about, but I had to try and limit it somewhat for the sake of brevity. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly try and keep these regular 40k videos coming, there's usually a new one out every single day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Making all of these videos does take a fair amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, 
any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain new videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.